Yeah, well, welcome to what I hope is going to be kind of a new series. Uh, we're learning Common Lisp. Uh, I've never done this before, so we're going to see how this goes. But uh, we're going to be looking at Common Lisp. I uh, know some Common Lisp. I'm going to be learning more along the way. Uh, and we're going to begin uh, with just a little bit of um, introduction into the program that I'm trying to show. So uh, I'm trying to build a program that is a port of a game called Alpha Strike to the computer. Alpha Strike is a computer game, as a uh, tabletop game. I'm going to try to port it over to the computer. Uh, it is about using mechs, which you can see a picture of one right here, right? Uh, this is what it looks like on the tabletop. Obviously, we're not going to be porting that part over. Uh, building miniatures. It's a 2D game, uh, despite the fact that it looks uh, with the minis. Uh, you're moving characters around on a map. Um, and we're going to port this over here. And what I'm working on right now is trying to lay out the uh, record sheet, the data, for each uh, unit. And so this is the unit card. This is what they need to look like. Um, we're using LTK to do this. And the reason I want to do this series and the reason that I'm picking LTK is that there are a lot of uh, videos that I have found that cover some of the more complex graphical libraries out there uh, for Common Lisp. But I didn't see one that really focused on uh, LTK, which is actually one of the simpler ones, particularly in terms of the initial setup. So one of the things that can be frustrating when you're trying to get started with graphical programming, at least it has been for me, has been trying to find all of the things that you need to get installed and set up and configured correctly in order to actually get it to work. And then how do you then package that to send off? Um, and uh, this should be relatively simple. Uh, does, this is a much more, this is I have, it has just existed on every computer I've ever used. Uh, and installing LTK is not complicated, and TCL has been right there. So this is KT Enter as what we're using as our programming library, uh, as our programming interface for the GUI, and um, which is, sh or TK Enter, which is short for uh, TK Interface. And uh, we're using um, the common lisp, lisp bindings for that, uh, the library called LTK. And this is what we have for the data. Um, I'm going to try to type very quietly because when I was trying to do this video, uh, when I was actually doing the live coding, uh, it sounded like I was banging on the microphone with a hammer. I'm going to try to avoid that effect. Um, so there is a uh, class that is creating the units. Um, those are stored in a record sheet class. And uh, I am then taking that class, which is defined as an element, and porting it into these uh, descriptions here. And this is kind of building it. So I want to kind of walk through the build that I have right now. Let me begin by just showing you what it looks like. Um, so this is what the program looks like when we run it. First of all, you'll notice when we run this, we don't get any effect here in Slime, which is unlike what we would usually see when we're running something in slime. It's one of the beauties of Lisp is you can run it interactively, you can load buffers in, and, and, and it's super convenient for that. You can even load individual expressions in uh, and just load them in and process them. It creates a very kind of interactive flow between here I'm writing my text and now I'm writing my, uh, now I'm testing it, now I'm writing my code, now I'm testing it, and we don't have to, uh, we don't have to leave in order to be able to do that. Um, you would think that nothing has happened here, but actually what has happened here is we've created a separate window. This is what it currently looks like. I'm still working on building this here. This is at the end of uh, my first kind of real attempt at trying to lay this out. Um, and I'm just gonna move this over here so we can see all of the different pieces as we are building this. So this is created by this function right here, display record sheet. And there are within this a couple of elements. I've got this giant let up here. I say giant. It's not uh, nearly as big as it has been uh, when I was originally trying to figure this out. And in this, I have created a couple of label frames. So the label frames allow me to group these pictures or these icons together, and then they're going to allow me to space them out in a way that makes them a little bit better. Uh, what I'm aiming for is to get something that looks closer to this. We're not going to get all the way to this. Um, uh, eventually I'll need to have a photo if I was actually going to try to get all the way to this because what is supposed to go in this space here is the uh, f the wireframe picture of what the mech looks like. Um, and I may go for that, uh, but that's not where I'm at at the moment. Um, but 
This has basic information about the unit. It's got the name of the unit, which is going to tell us it's a Locust LCT1V, how many points it's worth, uh, and then I have a general section here, which tells us what type it is, what size, all of this information that is kind of the generic moving and pilot skill abilities. And then I have um, the attack built section right here, which gives me a drop down to select which of the attacks that I want to use. Uh, I've got to program that so that the default is standard because every mech will have a standard value there. Um, and then I have the heat section. Uh, you can take on heat in exchange for some penalties. Uh, and if you take on too much heat, then you'll shut down and then you have to sit there and wait until the heat comes back down. Uh, so that's kind of a tactical trade-off uh, that you can have as a mech. And then finally, we have the damage section, which is going to have armor, structure, critical hits, and beneath that, the specials. Uh, so those are like special abilities that a mech might have, like it might have an advanced communications array that gives you a bonus to initiative, or it may have um, an ECM that allows you to jam any sensors, things of this nature. And all of that is laid down right here. We see here at the top, we create all of the top level items of this. So we create first that top row, which is not in its own label frame, uh, probably should be, and I might end up putting it in there, but it has the uh, unit label here. Uh, so first I say that it's the unit name. I want that formatted as bold as opposed to the rest of the name, which is only in Helvetica 20. I'm making that big because it is big here um, to kind of enlarge it. Uh, one thing that's left to fix on this as a, as a bug is that I do not currently um, have the text over here. Like I want this to slide over and uh, left justify. Uh, when I've tried using justify left, it hasn't done what I was expecting it to do. So I, I haven't yet figured that particular part of LTK out yet. I'm still learning this uh, and I'll have an answer for how that works tomorrow. Um, then I've got the name, the point value, uh, and then I have my blocks of information here, general info, attack info, heat info, and damage info. Because these are kind of information blocks, I have gone with that as my naming schema for the label frames. Uh, then after that, I have the specials, uh, which is just a list. Uh, and I don't have that formatted yet, but I will. And when we get that formatted, then it will all line up. Um, we'll just do this here, see if I can do this without... sounding like a hammer. Uh, I'm a really loud typer, even apparently on these cheap uh, keyboards. So uh, I'm a teacher by trade, and in one of my online classes, the students were like, typing sounds intensify. And I, I had no idea what they were talking about, and now I do. Uh, sorry, folks. Um, so then under here, this is where we're actually packing these labels into their display. So I begin by packing in the top level, right? Which is the unit labels, the name, the point value, and then the, the four information blocks and the specials. After that, I then pack my widgets that fill out the information blocks. And you can see those, if I just come a little lower so that it's all on the screen. try to type as quietly as possible. We can see those here. So if I drag this over here, you can see um, this top one right here puts in the type, and here's the type. Then here's size, and here's the size, target movement modifier, move. Um, and these are all things that need to be kind of filled out. I need to actually write a formatter for move because that's not the correct way to display that. Um, but that's these are things we're moving forward. Same for pilot. I actually need to tweak my pilot display uh, code so that it displays the piloting information in such a way that uh, it doesn't look like this guy's role is scout shooting shoot face, uh, that it's actually says scout and then pilot. Um, and these are things that I'm kind of working on developing. We have the drop down damage here, which is this, allows you to select which attack you're going to use. And um, finally, we have the heat and the damage, uh, and including the critical hits that are all stacked in there. So this is the current layout of this. Uh, and you can see for each one of these, what I'm doing is I'm just making an instance of that object. We have a label object. You can see all the different parts of it. So for example, we have labeled text. Uh, looking at this bottom one here, the uh, critical hit uh, one, there we go. 
you can see here I have the text and the text I'm just generating using a format string. Uh, so I have critical hits and then I just want to I would just want to pretty print the uh, the crits uh, or aesthetic print the uh, the crits for that given element. We have master which tells it which one of the frames this belongs to. So it actually this widget belongs to a widget and that is the master that widget is the damage info widget uh, which actually belongs to the RS uh, frame widget within this function and the RS frame widget is created outside of this particular one it's the content widget that you can just see at the top of the main function down at the bottom of the screen starting at line 47 um, and then within that we have uh, we're anchoring that on the west which I believe should make it stretch to fill to the westernmost side I believe I also of the uh, layout I think I also need to anchor that north and south um, and I actually have this set then to have a row span of two, which is why the critical hits stretches taller than the others. I close the window, but that's why the uh, critical hit stretches up and down as opposed to sideways. Uh, and that is to line up with this layout here, right, where the critical, hit, critical hits will eventually look like this, where I'll have how many of each critical hit there have been. Um, similarly, for armor and structure, currently you saw it's just two out of two, two out of two, uh, and eventually that's going to actually draw in circles that will either be colored in or not colored in and I'll need to create that as its own separate function like the damages drop down function that is there. Um, so this is the initial layout for this. In fact if we look at damages drop down, drop down we can see a different style here. Here I'm using a combo box. Now for the combo box uh, I'm displaying the damages. The damages are actually a, a class. I've created a, a CLOS class uh, for damages for the different kinds. Um, and then I have within that, I, I need to map those two values. So I have a function called display that prints them out and uh, then maps that to there. What I'll eventually do is then have a mapping then that goes back from what the choice is back out to which damage one was selected so that we know what the selection is. Uh, but I haven't got to binding yet. As you can see here, we have combo boxes, we have labels, we have label frames, and then the last one that I'm using right now is a frame, which is a just a general window um, or chunk of a window. So if I open this up, this whole thing right now is a frame. From this corner all the way down to here, I have put a little bit of padding around it, but not a lot. Um, and then I have packed it into zero, 00, which is the top left corner, so that it fills this space right here. Eventually, um, I'm going to pack the record sheet frames on this side of the map. So I'll have the map here uh, filling up the left, probably three quarters of, uh, of the map, maybe two thirds of the map. Uh, so maybe two thirds will be the main map view, and then I might have a mini map view, and then I want to have record sheet for my unit, record sheet for the enemy unit that I have selected right now. And then under here are the buttons such as uh, move and fire and all of that stuff. Uh, so that is kind of the, the rough layout that I'm working towards. Uh, and I might actually try to build that whole layout uh, tomorrow just to start getting things into the place that I want them to be. Uh, but that's the layout of the, the thing that I'm gonna be building and uh, look forward to seeing that. If you have any uh, feedback or thoughts, anyone who's seeing this, I'm gonna actually link the GitHub repository in, in below so that if uh, anyone has any thoughts, you can look over that and give me feedback. I'd love to have it. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, hopefully next time you'll be able to actually watch me do some coding uh, and I will manage to do that without deafening everybody uh, with my comment, uh, with the sound of my keyboard uh, banging over my